Hello and welcome to our Thought for the Day for Tuesday the 4th of April, which is Tuesday of Holy Week. And today, there are the reading for today is from Luke chapter 22. This chapter is so full of, of like the, the whole of the Passion story, is full of so many different emotions. And I've got two readings from the, the chapter today. The first is from verses 22 to 34. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has also asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. So this passage starts with the disciples arguing among themselves as to which of them was to be considered the greatest. Here we are in the story of Holy Week. Jesus has just had his last meal, the Passover supper, where he breaks bread and shares the cup with them. It is such a momentous moment where Jesus is fulfilling the prophets and he is trying to explain to the disciples that in the words of John the Baptist, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And yet the disciples, typical of almost all of humanity, are more concerned about themselves, about their position and their status. And so they do not perceive properly what Jesus has told them about his approaching death and resurrection. And they are sat eating with the Son of God, and yet they are worried which of them is to be considered the greatest. The pride and the arrogance of that group of men closest to Jesus, who have spent the last couple of years with him hearing his teaching and witnessing his miracles, Yet their human frailty still makes them worried about their own status. And this is followed by Jesus predicting Peter's denial of him, not just once, but three times. And of course, Peter does not realise how weak he will be. But through Jesus' intervention, Peter does not fail completely, but merely falters. Satan could have crushed Peter completely, but Peter, but Jesus has a plan for Peter. So Jesus chooses to show Peter that despite his weakness in the face of accusation, his faith will be renewed, and this is what makes Peter such a powerful leader in the years to come. And then we skip to Jesus going to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and then for him to be arrested, which I will now read from, the, uh, from Luke's Gospel, which is 39, verses 39 to 53. Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently and was in such agony of spirit that that his sweat fell to the ground with great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords and one of them struck at the high priest's slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this, and he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guards, and the elders who had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary, he asked, that you have come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day, but this is your moment the time when the power of darkness reigns. Now in the first part of this 
second reading, we see the disciples are being so overcome with tiredness that they don't support Jesus in prayer but fall asleep. Luke kindly suggests that they were exhausted with grief, but surely if they, were truly, if they truly understood the enormity of what was about to come, the fear amongst them would have, been pal- would, have been palpable, would have been palpable, so much so that they surely wouldn't all have fallen asleep. Regardless of their sleeping, I find it interesting that Jesus tells them to pray that they would not fall into temptation. The challenges that they would be facing in the coming hours and days would have been to deny knowing Jesus, to run away in fears of, of their lives, that they've been so, so, so frightened. And in one commentary I read, the focus is on what must surely have been the strongest temptation that they would face after Jesus' death, that, that they would no longer believe in Jesus as the Messiah. They may have felt deceived. The king they had longed for and had followed had been killed just like any other mortal being. It was important that the disciples faced those fears and that they stayed in Jerusalem until the Sunday, the day when Jesus would rise from the dead. But of course, one of their number had already fallen for temptation. Judas leads a crowd to Jesus and identifies him with a kiss, a symbol of greeting for a friend, but in reality, the means of betrayal. In the ensuing minutes, we see the fear and possibly the anger of the disciples as they strike out at the oncoming crowd and cut off the ear of a servant. But Jesus shows compassion and diffuses the situation by healing the injury. Jesus is arrested under the cover of darkness away from the temple where the crowds may have risen up in support of Jesus. How must Jesus have felt being betrayed by one of those closest to him? So in these two passages we have the self-importance, the pride and the arrogance of the disciples. We see the weakness of Peter but supported by the love of Jesus, the hope of the strength and the faith of Peter of the future. We have Luke telling us of the grief that the disciples are experiencing but we have their fear of deception and their lack of stamina to stay in prayer with Jesus. And finally, we have the betrayal of Judas, of Jesus by Judas with the kiss. So many feelings, so many emotions in these short passages. But in this Holy Week, what emotions will you feel? I challenge all of us to be truly engaged so that we can feel the emotions, the pain and the fears. And then on Sunday morning, we can share in the joy and the glory of the risen Jesus and give thanks for all he did for us and has done for us since. Amen.